Hello everyone. Some of the comments and emails have come through recently asking what is it that I do throughout my day and I had Tag follow me around for a couple of days and walk through the garden and see what it is that I do, how I spend my day. So if you want to know what it is I do, come on, check it out. So, uh, she thinks she is so slick. You know, uh, see this big, beautiful dirt pile behind me? Yeah, so this is topsoil that I saved um, from the dam, and she asked me um, what I was going to do with it, and I told her to leave it alone uh, because I had a use for it, that I was going to spread it out. So, uh, I wonder what happened. Let's look. What are all of those things? Hmm, I wonder what could have happened. Why is there hundreds of sweet potatoes in my dirt pile? Well, she thinks she's slick, so I got something for her. All right, just getting back from the garden. Here is my harvest for today. I just grabbed a couple of potatoes because they were on the top and easy to grab. A few cucumbers, a few bell peppers. So this was the big score here. Harvested these because they looked like they were getting ready to go to, they're getting ready to flower see that how big that is we need to process these for winter use here is one tote here is the second tote I went ahead and grabbed the cauliflower that were big so that I could get those started <clears throat> I will get my table set up and check back in. Okay, we are here. We. Okay, I am here right next to the pond. I am all set up. I harvested the broccoli and the cauliflower and I am getting ready to process them to freeze for my family for winter use and tag found some tag found some turnips dug that up too so i am putting the crowns in the water for just a minute look at that This is why I soak them. Oh, there's several more in there. Okay, so this is what I'm using. The Young Living Thieves Fruit and Veggie Soak. I just put a teaspoon into the water, soak them for a minute, rinse them in the clean water, set them on the towels to dry. Then I will cut up. I'll be back. As you saw in the previous video, the broccoli plants look like they had some insect damage to them. And so this is what I'm doing here, trying to pick off the larva of the, I'm not even sure what kind of bugs they, the, they ended up being. There were several different types of larva that were on the broccoli 
and the thieves cleaner helps to get them to release from where they're at and try to get away from it. So some of them were easily picked off because they were floating along the top or the bottom, but as I'm trying to pick through these broccoli plants, they are they are in abundance. I was I'm glad I got these harvested when I did. Um, I ended up with 25 pounds of broccoli and cauliflower. Um, I combined them together so that they will be easy to use come winter time. Um, going through on the cauliflower here, the there was quite a few larvae on the cauliflower, a lot less than the broccoli, but um, still in abundance. Um, the small bucket there that I have, I'm putting the debris from the heads that I don't want to consume, and then also any larva or cobwebs that I find um, go in the small bucket for the chickens later. The, the Thieves Cleaner is something that I have used for quite a while. This particular bottle is at least three years old. I just use a teaspoon at a time because a little bit does go a long way. Um, these are, I've never used any kind of sprays on these vegetables, but again, I'm just basically cleaning off the, the insect larva and, well, poop for a lack of a better word, that they, they leave behind. Um, I know some of this will come off in the blanching process, but again, it's I want it clean. Um, broccoli and cauliflower are something that we consume a lot of through the winter months, so this is going to help us um, sustain us through the winter. And at 25 pounds probably is not enough, but this is a good start. On the broccoli here that I'm cutting up now, I cut the crowns off and the stems, but I do put them all together. The stems could be a little bit woody, so some of them you can see I'm trying to peel them as I go along so that I don't have any problems. You can see I'm walking down to the pond because Tag was, you know, hard at work swimming down there, so I had to go check on him to see if he needed, you know, a margarita or something. But coming back, I had to get back to work. So he's down there swimming while I'm up here processing broccoli for the winter. Back to broccoli cutting. I'm filling this six gallon bucket here with the broccoli and I ended up filling the entire bucket with just broccoli. And then I got a half a bucket of cauliflower afterwards. The larva in the small bucket I will then take to the chickens and you can see how easily they go. Um, here I'm blanching the broccoli and the cauliflower. I get the wire, water boiling and then I submerge them for two minutes and then I take it out. You're supposed to put it then in ice water. I did not. I put it directly on a table on a towel to cool. This setup right here is my outdoor cooking setup. So living off grid, you know, it's 100 degrees during the day, this, this time of year, I am not gonna heat up the house. So I have a three burner cook stove here. I use it, my uh, water bath canner actually fits fine on these burners and have had no problems. Then the grill in the, in behind me, I have another burner. So I technically have four burners and a grill that I use on a regular basis. And then I just take that water there and dump it off the back deck. So it'll pool up into little pools and then the chickens come and slurp it up. On my back deck right now working, as you can see. This is another reason why I just cannot wait to get the processing kitchen up. Um, it'll give me a space of my own. Here's my haul here. I took it and put it in the freezer. Um, now I'm feeding the chickens those larvae. Um, and as you can see, these are the adult hens. They're all over those uh, larvae. Now I'm working on the dam. These are the uh, cowpea row here. I am 
pulling weeds and leaving behind anything that I do want to keep. Um, the clover that I planted on the back side of the dam, some have spread to this side of the dam and I am going to leave that so that I don't have to, you know, reseed. But everything else, the grass I'm pulling out and I do have an app on my phone that I check um, certain things that I don't know what it is to see if it's something that I want there in the in the future. If it's not, I pull it, I throw it up on the dam, and then I collect it later. Um, this area is the most beautiful place to work. The pond is pleasant. The breeze that comes off of that water, even in the 100 degree weather, is it does cool you off. So it's just so peaceful. I'm absolutely pleased to have the dam there and the pond the pond is uh, a nice recreational uh, spot the back side of the dam is where the is where tag had found the turnips here i'm working in the processing kitchen as i said before i cannot wait to get this space done so i have a place to work and spread out my um kitchen gadgets and and just have a place to work it out of the sun in the in the air conditioning um with a tv kind of kind of spoiled i know um this is the uh used cabinets i'm trying to finish up here I'm trying to make them my own oh here back to weeding <laughs> this is kind of a never-ending thing here Growing your own food and organically means um, this is something that I deal with often. I have, it does not bother me to pull weeds. I enjoy the sunshine and with these swells being new or with the dirt the way it is, I don't know why, but the weeds really come out easily. It's there, maybe it's because they haven't had time to establish because I continue to come up and pull them. Um, the these are the watermelons here and I'm trying to pick around them here's our two little older entertainers we'd love to get a livestock guardian dog at some point in time or a couple um, just haven't yet haven't found the right ones in the garden now trying to just look around and see what needs to be done um, and where I need to focus my attention, which is obviously in the peppers. The peppers need to be harvested and um, done something with. Tag is in the process of building me a solar dehydrator, so I will be able to dehydrate um, without using uh, anything except for the power of the sun. And then um, I'll be able to do multiple items too because of the size of the dehydrator. Um, here I've got the Brussels sprouts growing and lettuce and several different herbs. I've got uh, sweet potatoes and um, obviously a few weeds too. I need to get up here and weed this and tend to it. Um, I'm going to harvest the lettuce seeds and um, save those for later use. Hey babe, what are you doing? Harvesting lettuce seeds. See? Mm. Ouch. Harvesting lettuce seeds. And then I will um, take these back and process them and then remove the plants so that I can use this bed for my next Secession planting. Yeah, so what, what will you plant next? Um, I have spinach already planted mm -hmm. and um, sweet potatoes. Sweet okay. potatoes. Yeah, you've been struggling to find a place to plant sweet potatoes, haven't you? What do you mean? Nothing. You just, I knew you were looking for places to plant it. I do have a few plants I need to put in the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are these all the same types of lettuce? Um, there's green and red. Mm -hmm. So I've got two buckets. These are the green. 
pardon me, excuse me, sir. Um, here, let's do this one. And your Brussels sprouts have been chewed up, haven't they? Yes, they have. I have been out here picking larva off of them, so I'm hoping it's 100 degrees right now, so they're wilted. Mm -hmm. So I'll harvest these red lettuce seeds and then come down and remove the plant just like that, taking it out, compost so, so, it. Yeah, why do you throw it in the aisle? Compost. Yep, just keep keep filling it up. Yep, chop and drop. Chop and drop. Yep, here's some sweet potatoes coming up already. This was one basil plant that I planted last year seeded itself and I have gotten several plants from it. It's all, it actually s spread here onto that next bed and to the other side of this bed somehow. So I just left it, let it grow mm -hmm. free. Yeah, you've always been a big fan of letting stuff grow to seed. Yeah. Right. Oh look, see even under here, big bushel of grass. Mm -hmm. There's just a volunteer basil there and then I'll look I'm, I'll be able to get seeds from it too nice what you doing checking the tomatoes there's a thought it was poop do you see there's tomatoes in here mm-hmm Quite a bit. So these are the Romas. These Romas are um, indeterminate. So they will keep producing to where the Amish paste, I'll show you how big those are. They're a lot bigger, but they're determinate. So they will grow, they will produce, and then they will stop. Mm. These ones will keep producing until we get a frost. And why do you like Romas? Romas are great for canning so this is what i'm going to make the sauces and uh, salsa with the romas and amish paste i uh, i can show you the slicers but they um they don't have any any tomatoes on them yet yeah we throw it in there yeah what are you doing found some larva eggs yeah, better get on that huh yeah i need to See what those are, kind of copper colored. Jalapenos. These are the Amish paste tomatoes. They have flowers on them, but they are, I don't see any actual tomatoes yet. So you, so you just walking around or are you actually doing something over here? Just kind of looking at stuff. Mm. I haven't been here in a couple days, so mm. let's go look at the cukes. I'm on. Follow you. What you doing? Pulling weeds. Mm. Check it out. Yeah. This is cilantro. the cilantro. Yes, so the coriander, the seed is what I'm looking for here. This is the Buffalo Seed Company mm -hmm. uh, agreement. Um, they will buy back the coriander seed. So my goal here, I have been harvesting as it's been growing and drying it and freezing it for salsa. And now I have let it go to seed so that I can collect them. Nice. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. These still come out so easy. I'm so great grateful. Did you see that? Yep. A little too far. Taking the chicken. Yeah. You got a couple over here that are not ginormous. Maybe I'll get the feed from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are huge. 
Holy hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut a couple of them off yeah. there and we should have been Yeah, some of these I could take and we can eat for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, cut some in the morning and I'll take them to the chicken. Okay. If you want them gone. Yeah. Real quick and in a hurry. You know, the chickens often get special treats. When I'm not in the when I'm not able to be in the garden every day, cucumbers or whatever just keep growing. So when they're in when they are overripe, I take them and feed them back to the chickens. Nothing goes to waste around here. We take these back and feed them to the animals, and it's the circle of life. Um, what we can't eat, something else will. And um, I am not able to be in the garden every single day or even every other day. You know, I'm trying to get the processing kitchen done and further that, pro that journey these, oh, look at that little guy. He's so, so, so friendly. His name's actually friendly because he just hangs out at my feet. They are, I love hanging out with the chickens. They all have their own little personalities and um, we have grown these from, from the egg. So they, we've been around them their whole lives. We have four different age groups of chickens right now. These are the older ones here and the babies are or the younger ones are um, it put in their own pen so that there's not a lot of pecking until they get a little bit older. I'm gonna cut all these up and leave them here. A lot of the adult chickens are in the woods through the daytime hours. So these are just the ones that hang out here, um, the younger ones that hang out here. They'll eat as much as they want and then the older ones will come home and they will clean up what's left. It also gives these guys a little bit uh, extra time to to eat with before the other ones get back. Over here, these are the little babies. This is a smaller pen, but these guys are only 21. Well, some of them are 21 days old and some of them are six days old. So it is um, two different two different age groups in that little pen. We cut, them, we cut the cucumbers up a little bit smaller for those guys so that they don't have to try to flip them over. I hope you enjoyed my time, my last couple of days of chores and what I do around the farm. Thank you for watching. Every day is different here. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Kind of putting stuff away. Hey, what are the car parts in here? Did your mechanic do that? No, I did that. Why? I needed the space. Why? Mm. They don't go in there. What do you mean they don't go in there? I thought we were free to put things anywhere we wanted them. What are you talking about? Why can't I use your space? What are you talking about? They don't go in there. Do you use my space? No, you have no? places to... Those go in your spite, in your shop. Oh, so everything has a place? Yeah. Okay, got it. What? Nothing, love you. What are you getting at? Nothing, I love you, goodbye. Hey everybody, well, you know, I hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, following B around and what she does, you know, but it's not typical. I mean, every single week, every single day, you know, it's different. Right now it's gardening season, so, you know, everything's gardening heavy and, you know, uh, B and I joke around and I'm, you know, so thankful that, uh, you know, she'd plant sweet potatoes in my in my dirt pile because at the end of the day, it's just food. Yes, it, you know, slows me down and, and all of that stuff, but uh, I thought it was cute and fun. But hey, listen, I got to go for now. And, uh, you know, like I always say, you guys, you know what, go challenge freedom, you know, challenge the way you live every single day. It's becoming more and more important with the things that are going on in our world today. You got to take, take control of your own life. Hold the line. Don't give an inch. Tag off. See ya.